everybody. Dr. Philip Fletcher here, and welcome to Humanity Matters Special Edition Reaction Video. I haven't made a video in a while, been uh, concentrating on podcast side over at anchor.fm. So make sure you check out Humanity Matters on anchor.fm. But today I wanted to uh, do a video about Black Lives Matter, the organization. The large one, not the local ones that I know of, but the large one. Their whole organizational scheme just is is baffling. But we are going to get into that. As always, connect with me on any of my social media outlets, whether that's Twitter, Facebook, the World Wide Web, YouTube. All right. Subscribe to the newsletter, philipfletcher.org. It's right there on the top of the page. All right. And then as I talked about, you can connect with me on anchor.fm, Apple, Google, wherever you get your podcast content. Spotify, subscribe. Greatly appreciate it. Leave a rating, a review, all that good stuff. I greatly appreciate it. Got some good stuff coming out weekly on that. So let's dig right in to it. So Huh. Patrice Cullors, one of the founders, one of the three founders of Black Lives Matter, uh, did a, I guess, like an interview panel. Um, and she said some very curious things about Black Lives Matter, the organization that she helped found. All right. In response to what happened uh, with Trayvon Martin uh, years ago. And it has raised a whole lot of money over the years 90 million reportedly and they've bought houses nice houses in different places los angeles atlanta the claim is that a lot of this money hasn't actually gone to help black folks whom they're seeking to advocate for right you know let's check out their website but i was curious to what she said regarding um, one, that they just became a nonprofit recently. Two, she had no knowledge about the 990, all right, which is a reporting tool that the IRS uses specifically for nonprofit organizations, charitable organizations, all right? Full transparency, I run a nonprofit organization and we report 990s. In fact, you can go on our website and look at our 990s, recent ones, the last two. And in fact, you can go on the IRS website and you can look up for any charitable organization, things that they report, their determination letters, their status, whether they're 501c3, c4, so on and so forth, right? All of that stuff is readily available to the public. But Patrice Colors states that she didn't, she clueless, oblivious, right? And all of these questions that are being raised about their financial practices, accountability, reporting, uh, that this is once again just simply a work of the system targeting Black organizations, so on and so forth. When in fact, I think she's just using this as a cover for her poor leadership and the leadership of that organization. And maybe hiding things i don't know nonetheless so here's the video it's five minutes long but i'm gonna play the question interact with that and then we'll hear patrice colors talk interact with that um but at the end of the day and and, and i have a self-interest in this because i run a nonprofit, and i'm an american who's got this skin color right and People can be like, oh, you're a black leader and you got a black led organization. Mm, that other organization, this nationwide one that's done all this stuff and gotten all this money from who we don't know, because the 990 would tell us that, but they're making the argument they don't have one, which is odd because I found a 990, but we'll find we'll get there in a second. Uh so let's hear the video. Unfortunately, StreamYard. Unless I like screen record the video, you're not going to be able to see the video. Um, but I'm going to play the video, make sure I give proper attribution. 
So this is Patrice Colors and Black Lives Matter 990. Uh, it's from an organization N A N O E. All right. So here we go. Start from the beginning. Here we go. I want to start first with um, what does it look like to set a standard for accountability and transparency that's maybe not existed before and is probably unfairly placed <laughs> upon us, mm -hmm. but it is still an opportunity. Okay, so the, the questioner talks opens up with transparency and accountability, right? And what does it look like? And how transparency and accountability is unfairly placed on us. Well, who's the us? Well, black people, black led organizations. All right. So within the question, it is inferring that there should be two different ways to think about transparency and accountability as it relates to black nonprofit organizations. But let's continue on. To do something different because. To be honest, I want to know who's digging into United Way's 990s, who's digging into mm -hmm. these philanthropic organizations, mm -hmm. these foundations who only give away 5% of their budgets a year, mm -hmm. yeah. but comes first for the Black-led organization that we know got money. Hello, ACLU, y'all got money. Mm -hmm. But nobody's asking for their 990s. That's right. And so this is still an opportunity. Yes. It is a painful Yes, it is a painful opportunity that comes at a cost. But what is the opportunity to set a new standard for transparency and accountability that hopefully will be willing to ask across the board and not just of the black woman led organization that seems to always yep. be setting the new standards? That's exactly right. So pause there. So the questioner don't know her name. Is showing her ignorance. So she is. In her question, she's making the claim that to ask for the 990, and we'll get to what that is, right, is unfair to be asked of Black-led organizations, all right? Organizations that are serving the quote-unquote Black community, right? And then she goes on to say, who's digging into United Ways uh, asking about their 990s? And what about the ACLU? And she brings up this 5%. The question is, how does she know about that 5%? How would you arrive at that percentage? Well, guess what would tell you that? The 990. Okay. Sec third thing is this. The 990 is publicly available. The 990 is publicly available. If a nonprofit is doing their due diligence, right, they file a 990. Right now, there are some nonprofits that are required to file 990s, and there are other nonprofits that don't have to file 990s because of their determination. So, on your determination letter, if you have a nonprofit, it will let you know your designation, whether you, what type of 501 you are, and it'll also tell you whether or not you'll be required to file a 990. It's right there on that one sheet of paper. Right there, Patrice Colors and her two other founders and her board, if they were serving one another, would have known all that. Needless to say, the questioner, right, who's asking this question about transparency and accountability, asking what's going to be the new ways, right? Because for she makes this claim that Black women, Black-led organizations are on the forefront of this. I don't know what she's talking about. So what is the 990? Well, we can go to Google, all right, if you want, or DuckDuckGo, or you can just go to the IRS website, the IRS website, the Internal Revenue Service, all right? And the Internal Revenue Service, all right, offers you a whole thing about charities and nonprofits, exempt organization types, life cycle of an exempt organization, the annual filings and forms that are required based off of your determination, charitable contributions, how you can search for the charities and education se sessions. Hey, so that you can know more so that you can be 
effective in leading your nonprofit in this particular area, right? So you can go to irs.gov and look it up. And look, lo and behold, right there, 990 is the very first. So it tells you the form and it gives you the instructions. And it, then it tells you who must file, all right? So the 990, okay? So you have a 990, you have a 990 EZ. And typically, that depends on how much money you've raised in that previous year, okay? So it's a long form, okay? Uh, it goes through a whole host of information, all right? Uh, to ask about the name of your organization, the address. It asks for your employer identification number. That's going to be important, okay? Telephone number. It asks for your gross receipts, my money that you had coming in for that year, all right? What's your tax exempt status? Are you a 501c3? Are you a 501 uh, C. Okay. The other things that it asks for, and I'm just on the first page right now. Okay. It asks now activities and governance. It asks about your revenue from the prior year and the current year. It asks about your expenses. Your revenue and expenses can be broken down into contributions and grants, program service revenue, investment income, other revenue, and it gives whole explanation of what those are because further down you're going to break out what those things look at look like and then it gives asks what's your total revenue then it asks for the expenses grants similar amounts paid benefits paid two or four members salaries and compensation employee benefits uh, professional fundraising fees fundraising fees okay so all of that is there on the first page of the 990 and then it breaks it out. Now, you can prepare it on your own or you can pay an accountant to do it. My organization, we pay somebody to do it. My treasurer doesn't do it for accountability purposes. We send it to somebody else and we send them all of our financial statements for the year. They get all of our documents in terms of what we raised, what we spent, all of that good stuff, and any other additional information that they're asking for. A list of board members, so on and so forth. And then that external person does all the work okay and then at the end they send it back we review it sign and it's sent off i get a copy the irs gets a copy we keep one on file and then for greater transparency i put it on our website or you can go to the irs website put in the ein number nonprofit information and you can look at their 990 it is there okay all right, so the questioner asked the question. Now, let's hear Ms. Culler's response. Um, it's a really good question. I think, you know, first of all, number one, I actually did not know what 990s were before all of this happened. It's confusing. I, so part of the opportunity here is to educate yes. our folks. Okay, so she didn't know. The responder said, or the questioner said, it's confusing. You've been at this, Miss Colors, for almost a decade. Who's advising you? You've raised a whole lot of money. Shockingly, corporations, businesses have been giving you money. I don't know how much tax dollars have gone to you. It'll be interesting to find out. But you say you did not know. Who is your treasurer? Let's keep going. Like something's being weaponized against us that many people don't even know and honestly don't care about. Okay, so keywords here. Because a critique is happening, because accountability is happening in relationship to the amount of money that has been raised and the What's being alleged is the only thing that's been shown is these these houses that have been purchased. To ask that question, she believes the 990, this form that the NAACP uses, the Urban League uses, Boys and Girls Club uses, other Black organizations use, my organization use. I know Black organizations here in Conway, Arkansas use them. She makes a claim that to ask, Where's your 990? Where's that document that reports the amount of money that you've raised and how you're spending it? 
she believes it's a wep it's being used as a weapon. Okay. But we're talking about transparency and accountability, remember? Okay. You know about them until they started asking us for them for COVID relief. <laughs> I said, you need my 990. You yes. have to call the accountant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So the questioner makes the claim that during that time when the current and the previous administration were uh, giving out, I'm sure, PPP loans, so on and so forth. You had to report that information. And she said, I need to ask the accountant. Okay. So this was like a year and a half ago, 2020, 2021. Your accountant didn't tell you then what the 990 is and what's required of you. So why are you shocked now to hear about 990 in relationship to Black Lives Matter? But Patrice Colors goes on. Accountant handle that. Like, I, I don't know what that is. Um, it, it is such a trip now to hear the word, the, 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 the term 990s. I'm like, Ugh, it's like triggering. Um, April 15th is next week. Yo. But so why is the term 990 triggering? Again, if you go look at the 990 and what it asks for, it's going to ask for where the money is coming from. And in some cases, depending on the amount of money, I believe it's 5,000 or more. All right. Who made those donations, names, addresses, all that kind of stuff. And then how it's spent. And if they can account for all that money and how it's being spent, yes, it should be triggering to you, Miss Colors, and to your two other founders and all those others who had some type of leadership influence within your nonprofit organization. So yeah, it should be triggered. Let's keep going on. But you know what? I feel like there's many opportunities here. One, to talk about Black-led institutions yes, and the history of them, especially Black radical institutions. You know, um, down in Los Angeles, the Panther Party had a nonprofit called Community Services Unlimited. Most people don't realize that many of our Black Power movements had nonprofits because that's how they were able to do the free breakfast program and things like that. And so I think it's a great opportunity to be like, the right-wing media didn't, didn't they don't get to co-opt our work and what we've done for so long. And so that seems like an interesting, this seems like an interesting moment to really talk about Black-led orgs. Okay, so yes, let's talk about Black-led organizations. I don't know what she means that the right-wing media is trying to co-op the work because the right-wing right media is not trying to do justice work. So they're not trying to co-op that work. There are persons on the right, persons on the left. There are interested individuals, I'm sure people who have made donations, that have questions as to what has happened with that money that they have donated to that organization. Now, she brings up the Black Panther Party. They raised money as a nonprofit, and guess what, Ms. Colors? They had something to show for it in terms of their education programs, in terms of their breakfast programs, in terms of them giving out food and serving the community. Yes, they have something to show for it. What does Black Lives Matter have to show for it? So let's continue on. It also feels like a really important opportunity to talk about why our organizations get under attack first, why they are the first ones to be challenged. And, you know, there's a there's a an opposition to them. And I also think it's a great opportunity to talk about what we're trying to build. Like for a lot. OK, so. The only organization that's being challenged right now, Ms. Colors is yours, is yours. And I'm gonna keep saying it's yours. Now, later on, you're gonna say you're not part of it. You're gonna always be attached to Black Lives Matter. You just are, you, you just are. Just like I'm always gonna be attached to my organization, even if I leave, you are attached to your, your organization, Black Lives Matter. And you are attached to that organization, especially from the very moment you started taking $1 from somebody else under the guise that you was going to use that in a charitable way. And thus you are accountable for every dollar that came in 
to that organization. You just are. You just are. I'm, you know, I'm not at Black Lives Matter anymore. I left last year, but for a long time, we weren't a nonprofit on purpose. We took seven years to become an actual 501c3. And the, these two short years, not even two years yet, that we've been an actual 501c3, it's been so under attack. And okay, so I was like, really? So she said there wasn't a nonprofit. For the last seven years. So uh, 2015, um, she said it had not been a nonprofit since they started in 2015. So I went and looked. Okay. So Philip went to the IRS website. Okay. So I found a 990. All right. For 2017. All right, name of the organization, Black Lives Matter Foundation. All right, address, 19197 Golden Valley Road, Santa Clarita, California, 91387. The EIN for Black Lives Matter Foundation. All right, 47-4143254. All right. I will put this in the comment section, all right? Because I don't want you to believe me, all right? You can look at it yourself. All right. So going on, telephone number, 818-692-9444. Okay, now they mark their tax-exempt status as 501c3, okay? Going on. Uh, the activities, okay? They have four voting, excuse me, uh, number of voting members is four. This is part one summary. So I'm just going to read the summary, okay? Just the summary, okay? Uh, number of independent voting members, three. Total number of individuals employed in calendar year 2017. So they filed this in 2018 for the 2017 year, all right? One. Total number of volunteers, five. All right, now, part one summary revenue. Okay, contributions and grants, $279,109. All right, total revenue, $279,109. All right, expenses, they spent $9,150 in grants, salaries, $24,000. Other expenses, uh, $56,012. Total expenses, $89,162, revenue less expenses, $189,947. All right. Then they talk about net assets at the beginning of the year, current year, they had $16,207. At the end of the year, $206,154. All right. Uh, Robert Ray Barnes uh, signed it, and then Floyd Green CPA uh, did the preparation. He's located in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, so um, she said they was, okay, is she speaking about the Black Lives Matter Foundation nonprofit, okay, that's located, incorporated in Santa Clarita, California? I'm asking, what is she talking about? Okay, now maybe it's the global one. I haven't found that one yet, all right? Full transparency. All right, so I was like, Maybe there's something else. All right. So I found another Black Lives Matter Foundation. All right. Incorporated in Delaware. All right. Address 16192 Coastal Highway, Louise, Delaware, 19958. I will put this one as well. Now, the first link I gave you was to their to the one in California's 990. All right. This is the determination letter for a different Black Lives Matter organization, nonprofit, has a different EIN. So the EINs are different, two different nonprofits, okay? Uh, and you'll see in the determination letter, it's 85-416-1819, okay? Uh, I have not found a 990 for this one. They got their determination letter uh, January 20th, 2021. All right. 
Now, if you go to Charity Navigator, uh, Charity Navigator has a uh, a grade for Black Lives Matter. Now, you can pay to join Charity Navigator and all that kind of stuff. You can do Guide Star. There's different ones. All right. So they have a score. They assign a score of Black Lives Matter Foundation of an 85. Which one? This is the first one, the one that reported the 990. Okay. Again, 47 414 3254, Santa Clarita, California. All right. So I'll put in here Charity Navigator. All right. They assign a score of 85 out of 100 and give a moderate advisory warning. All right. They give it a grade of 85 for their finance and accountability. They are not scored in terms of impact and results, leadership and adaptability, culture and community. Interesting. All right. The mission is stated. Black Lives Matter Foundation wants to comprehensively improve and elevate the lives of black and brown people via knowledge of our history and with education uh, that will guide our future. Uh, black Lives Matter Foundation is a 501c3 organization with an IRS ruling year 2015. All right. And donations are tax deductible. So Patrice Cullors says for the first seven years, they were not a nonprofit. Okay. They have a 990 that came out in 2017. It was raising money. It was a designation of 501c3. Again, I'd like to know what Black Lives Matter she's talking about. Again, at my beginning of my video, I said their organization is just odd. It's just odd. Which brings about the issues of transparency and accountability. But they reported they had voting members, they had one person on staff, they had money coming in, money coming out, and they had assets. Okay. And I haven't found another 29, uh, another determination, uh, excuse me, 990 since that 2017 one. Okay. But we're going to keep looking. We are going to keep looking. So what I can do is, and I wanted to do this live. I can take their um, EIN number, okay? There's a tax-exempt organization search tool that you can use, all right? So I'm putting in their EIN, all right? So Black Lives Matter Foundation comes up, okay? Santa Clarita, California, all right? So there we find their determination letter, all right? June 5th, 2015. Uh, Tarzana, California was the original mailing box. Okay. Uh, let's see. They have, there we go. They have a 990, uh, from 2015, a 990, 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019. All right. Now they've been having some problems in California too. All right, which we'll get back to. So in 2019, they filed a 990. All right. So there's 990s out there. And so I'm shocked. She's like, I don't know what's going on. Especially as it relates to California. Okay. So again, their revenue for 2019 reporting, the prior year was 232, 281. The current year, 163, 253. All right. So they're reporting stuff. But she don't know what's going on. So we're so she she's talking about education for black organizations. Miss Colors, why do you not know what's going on in your own organization, especially as it relates to the money that is coming in and how it's being spent? Okay, so going on, let's continue on hearing from Miss Colors because it's about to get even more interesting because blame shifting starts to happen. 
that's why so many folks avoid the nonprofit industrial that's complex. That's exactly right. When we think about our movements for Black liberation. Pause. So that term she uses, nonprofit industrial complex, trying to echo the military industrial complex. The military industrial complex is something that we need to be wary of. Now she's making a, a false equivalence, the nonprofit industrial complex. Just going on. And that's the, the, the questioner here. Mm -hmm. In order to serve community, quote unquote, legally, yes. too often do we get pushed or forced into a system mm -hmm. that is actually meant to attack us yes. and limit the capacity and the reach of our work. Exactly and right. so I think we have to start questioning those institutions. That's exactly right. So I, I don't know where the questioner bases her question on. What facts does she base that on? There's rules you got to follow. But nothing is stopping you from raising money. Nothing is stopping Black Lives Matter from taking that 90 million some odd dollars, however much it is, and using it to create a system that sub Black Lives Matter organizations that are local, county, statewide to apply to for use of those funds. Nobody's stopping that. What we're talking about is, again, the money coming in, how is it being spent? How that is an attack on Black individuals, Black-led organizations or organizations that are serving Black and Brown communities. I'm using their language. What I said was, what was coming up was blame shifting. I've yet to hear any res uh, acceptance of responsibility as far as the infrastructure, as far as the policies and procedures, as far as an explanation of how money was raised and spent. She is not addressed, not in this clip. This would have been a great time for Patrice Colors, especially that time she was with the organization to lay out what their plan was as money was coming in and how it was going to be distributed to help these communities and individuals that they were claiming that they were going to help. Let's continue on. Yes, there has been so much um, clarity for me, a questioning for me. I don't know if I have clarity or answers yet, but I'm like, wow, it, this doesn't seem like, this doesn't, this doesn't seem safe for us. This 990 structure, this nonprofit system structure, this is like deeply unsafe. Like this is being literally weaponized against us. Against so again, she uses, now she doubles down. Now she feels it's unsafe. Who's threatening you? People are asking legitimate questions. I get asked legitimate questions. How's your money spent? Where's it going to? And People want to see when I say, hey, I'm raising money for X. At some point, they need to see X appear. And I should be able to show and print, hey, this money is coming in. And this is how it was spent. But Ms. Colors is making the claim that any type of critique, any type of investigation, reasonable, reasonable, that's asked all the time of many organizations. So she feels justified in critiquing the system. She feels justified. She has a moral standing to critique law enforcement and the patriarchal structure and, and questioning the nuclear family. But when it's turned back on to her, how are you using that money? Where did it go? She feels it's being weaponized. The people we work with, I can't tell you how many people are like, am I next? Like, is, are they gonna do this to me? Is, is, so there's not a lot of, um, that's like a 
when you, you know this, you run an organization, like people's morale in an organization is so important. Yes. But if their organization and the people in it are being attacked at, with, at, and scrutinize everything they do, that leads to, to deep burnout. That leads to deep like resistance and, and, and trauma. And okay, so Ms. Colors, as a nonprofit leader, you have the primary responsibility to establish a culture in which the individuals who are working in that organization, they are able to do their best work. They are able to produce great advocacy. They have the resources to do those things. Resources, they're going to get paid to do it. They're going to have the resources in terms of having the materials, support social media campaigns, be out there on the streets, so on and so forth. But that culture setting begins with you. But also part of that culture setting is having in place policies and procedures that, guess what, actually protect you the, and the individuals that are working in that organization. The lack of morale that you're claiming, the trauma that you are claiming is due to your poor leadership and those other individuals who are involved. This is not the white man attacking you. This is not systemic racism. This is your poor, impotent leadership. It's just what it is. I think that other piece for me around, you know, what I think it's is important for people to understand is, and it's connected to, the, to this question, but there is a, there is a misinformation and disinformation um, uh, effort to not just um, challenge Black Lives Matter and the organization, but it's an experiment. If they win, then it's the next black led organization. Yes, it is. So I don't know who they is. All right. So she brings up misinformation and disinformation. Again, all the information is readily available on the IRS website. They give you an explanation of what a nonprofit is, the different types of nonprofits. They give you educational resources. They give you every form and then instructions to the form and how to complete those forms and then the timelines in which to submit those forms. So I don't understand what she means by the misinformation and disinformation. If what she's referring to is that there are individuals who don't agree with the ideology and what Black Lives Matter Foundation purports in terms of specifically interactions between uh, Americans who are racialized Black in relationship to law enforcement, that's a whole different discussion. But what we're talking about here is the fiduciary responsibilities that you and your board members or who's ever in charge of Black Lives Matter Foundation has. That's the issue. And then it's the next black led organization and it's the next black person who's leading that. And so it's so important that we pay attention to what's happening and we don't allow for they and they have this so that they know what they're doing, like how to create the infighting, how to create the distrust. Again, who is the they? Who specifically is the they? Notice that that is never though that they is never defined. That pronoun is used, but the actual individuals or groups, they are never defined. Then it sets up this situation where she's, it, they've been good at this, to give the perception that Americans racialized as Black have to continually look over their shoulder because someone is out to get them. There is some boogeyman out to get them. Instead of Miss Colors and your two other founders and whoever else was involved with you taking responsibility. It's okay to say you didn't know. You said that. And it's okay to say, hey, you know what? 
These are the things we're going to do to fix this. And we're going to get full accountability. We're going to lay out everything so that people can understand what was happening with the money that was coming in. Let's finish this off. We have to stop it. We can't, we have to stop it before they do it. We have to shut it down. We have to be showing up against it. And so that has been really important to me too. Like taking the time to kind of stand back and watch it happening and being like, oh, this is how this works. Like we, we are literally the experiment right now. Okay, so she's saying we are literally the experiment. Again, victimization, all right? Instead of taking uh, full account of how they're running their organization, right? It's they, it's they. So implied, we don't need to give, possibly implied, we don't need to give an account for how our money is being spent. And in fact, when you ask us, how our money is being spent. When you ask us for any type of documentation, it's they, it's the system trying to keep down black and brown individuals. This is what you need to do, Ms. Colors. Again, get with your people. Get all their stuff together and just give a full accounting. Do the documents. Pay somebody, you got the money, to do the work. It's that simple. Surely you got the documents of who got paid, benefits. You got the documents of where money went in terms of fundraising and things like that. Like, just bring the stuff together. Do the hard work. But my, my, my fear is that you're just going to continue, and I'm going to say this, your Marxist influence mentality. That this is a class struggle, and more specifically, this is a contest between blacks and browns and whites. So you take in Marx, you moved it from the class struggle, and you just make this into a racial struggle, right? Instead of looking at yourself, doing the hard work, and be like, hey, we got to make these changes. We got to make these changes. So I hope this information is being helpful. Uh, visit those links. Uh, if you've got any other information you want to uh, send to me, I would be glad to uh, take that information. Um, I'll be posting this on YouTube and all that other stuff and over on Facebook. Um, so, yeah, Black Lives Matter. Come on, y'all. As a nonprofit, do better. Do better. You're not making it hard on me. You're not making it hard on me. I'm my own organization. You know, I'm going to do the necessary things, have the right people around me so that we can continue to do the main thing, provoke hope in people. You can do the same thing like other small nonprofits and large nonprofits are doing. Regardless of who they serve, regardless who makes up their board and staff in terms of ethnicity, in terms of income background. You're not special. You're not. You're just not. You're just a nonprofit organization. So, hey, as always, remember to be loved, to be kind, to be generous and courageous. And if we remember to live in hope, we can do the impossible. Take care. God bless. Hey, if you found something of value, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Find us on Facebook at Dr. Philip Fletcher. Find us on Twitter at Philip Fletcher. And as always, visit us on the website philipfletcher.org.